Numerical Computation, Chapter 4, Video Number 4. In this video, we explore possibilities of using higher order polynomials. And the most famous one here is called Simpson's Rule. So we start with cutting up the interval from A to B into 2m equal subintervals. So pay attention to um, this, um, the way we um, label. So it's 2m, not n, and uh, therefore the length of each subinterval we consider uniform grid for the sake of simplicity. So the interval length h here is b minus a over 2m. And then we give these uh, index for the um, points x0 all the way to x2n, those will be the two boundary, they will equal to a and b, and then the um, internal points will have distance h between them. Now a subinterval is considered ranging from x2i to x2i plus 2, and actually there is a point right in the middle that is x2i plus 1. Okay. And on that interval, we would interpolate the function fx at those three points, x2i, x2i plus 1, x2i plus 2, and we want to use a quadratic polynomial because we have three interpolation points. So here is a geographic interpretation again. Now my interval, the subinterval, is this, but... I take two of them at a time and treat this as kind of a subinterval and try to find a polynomial that interpolates f at these three points and which is a quadratic polynomial and we denote it by pi. Okay, so pay attention. There is an additional point on the interval that we are finding the polynomial. So by now we shall be pros for interpolation polynomial. And you can use um, basically any form you like, but um, for the simplicity of the future derivation that we'll see later on, it's advantages to use the Lagrange form. So I hope we still remember the Lagrange form. So it exactly equals to the function value at x2i times the cardinal function at x2i. Okay, so it's x minus the other two points. Okay. And then the middle one, f at x2i plus 1, the function value multiplied by the cardinal function at x2i plus 1. And then finally, the third point, f at x2i plus 2, multiplied by the cardinal function at x2i plus 2. So this is a general form of the interpolating polynomial in the Lagrange form for just any um interpolating points. But remember, we are in dealing with a uniform grid, and let's see what that gives us. Now, with the uniform grid, we would know already all the values in the denominator, because these are just the interpolating points. So, say that will be negative h, and this will be negative 2h, so we get 2h squared, and this is h, and this will be negative h, so I get negative h squared, and this will be um, 2h, and that will be h, so I get 2h squared. Okay, so this is just writing out the polynomial again after using that piece of information. And then on this interval from x2i to x2i plus 2, we will use pi to approximate the function f. And we will use the integral of pi to approximate the integral of the function f. So we will have to integrate this pi from x2i to x2i plus 2. And then we see that we will have to integrate three um, kind of a quadratic polynomials, right? The others are just numbers. So these, this function and this function and this function will have to be integrated from x2i to x2i plus 2. And let's take a look at that. So we can work out these integrals. These are just polynomials of degree 2, and you can fill in the detail by working it out. So what you will get for the first term related to the cardinal function at the left point, we call it this value L1, 
is the integral of this polynomial, and you will get exactly 2 over 3 h cubed. So I encourage you to work this out by yourself. And uh, the second one, the one, um, the midpoint, you remember that it carries a negative sign in the front, so we'll take the negative sign with us, and you integrate that, and what you get is exactly 4 over 3 h cubed. And then the last integral is x minus 2i times x minus 2i plus 1, integrating from x2i to x2i plus 2, and you work it out and you get 2 over 3 h cubed. And now we can um, plug these informations in and see what we get. So now the integral of pi over this interval becomes this term here times the i1, the one we just worked out, and uh, f at x 2i plus 1 times the l2, which we worked out, and uh, um, 1 over 2h squared f at, this, at x 2i plus 2 times l3, which we worked out. So we can plug it in. Now I just put in the value of i1, i2, and i3. And we see that um, we can do some simplifications, say, this 2h squared cancels that 2 and cancels the power there. And the h squared cancels the power, so I just get h1. And then the 2h squared will cancel the constant 2 and then reduce the 3 by 1. Okay, And then we see that um, h, actually, um, one third of h is a common factor and we can take it out. So after taking out that common factor, h over 3, we just have the function value on the left of the interval plus the function value on the right of the interval plus 4 times the function value in the middle of that interval. Then the next step will be summing up all these integrals on the sub-intervals. Okay, so let's look at that. So the integral from a to b of fx is approximated by, we introduce this notation here, we call S, stand for Simpson, Simpson's rule for the function f with interval h, okay? And we'll be just be summing up i from 0 to n minus 1, our subinterval x2i to x2i plus 2, integrating of pi, and this we just worked out, and so plug that in, this gives me this summation. Okay, so for on each interval I have the left value and the right function value and plus 4 times the middle function value and I take out h over 2 and put it outside because it's a constant. So from the derivation of trapezoid rule we know that in, we will try to um, minimize the function evaluation to um, speed up the computation, meaning if f is evaluated at some point, uh, interpolating point, in the different summation sign, we will avoid doing it multiple times and we'll just figure that out and multiply it by the proper constant in front of it. So we need to do a count. Okay, so here is a, a kind of a, um, a way for counting it. So let's say I draw here two intervals, say this is interval um, i minus 1, so it's x at 2i minus 1 to x at 2i, okay? And let me draw that, so this is the interval i minus 1, and then this is the interval at i, okay? And we see that where um, they, um, the boundary point where the two intervals kind of touch each other, um, the function evaluation here, you have one coming from the left interval and you have one coming from the right interval, right? So on this interval, I will put one, four, one, because the one, four, one coefficient. And on this interval, I'll put one, four, one, which means right here, this is counted twice. So um, what pattern do we see here? I observe that um, the boundaries at A and at B, the very, very far to end, F is counted once. 
and at all the even index points that's in the interior, an F will be counted twice. And at all the odd index points, F is counted by four. Okay? So we will keep those numbers and simply multiply them on the F evaluation. Okay. So this is the final form. So this will equal to h over 3, which is a factor, and then f at x0 is counted once, f at x2n is counted once, the two end points, and uh, for all the even indexes that are interior, so i from 1 to n minus 1, f at x2i, so these are the even ones, it's multiplied by 2, and then for all the odd ones, index 2i minus 1, the function evaluation, is multiplied by 4 after you sum them all up. And we denote this rule by this notation S of F and H. Okay, um, next video we'll take a look at an example and uh, we'll also look at um, sample codes of how to code this in MATLAB. See you next video.